Hello. <laughs> and here we are. Hi, everyone. Hello. It is Tuesday. It is, <laughs> it is December 1st. And it's 7 o'clock, so that means it's time for our latte with a librarian. Um, today's latte is a failure. I actually have a recipe open right here for ginger hot chocolate, and I, I just haven't made it yet uh, because I just finished dinner, and I'm not in the mood for anything sweet right now. But this recipe sounds amazing. Ginger hot chocolate made with um, coconut cream instead of milk and a lot of ground ginger and real chocolate, and it just sounds absolutely amazing. You heat it up on the stovetop with a little bit of vanilla. I mean, it sounds so good. Um, so that's my imaginary latte for the night. I just still have the taste of dinner in my mouth, so we're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, but I hope that all of you are cozy, and if, uh, you know, on this kind of damp and chilly night, if you have a cozy drink, go ahead and share it. Um, something, oh, something that I did make over the weekend that was really good um, was red wine hot chocolate. I haven't made it in a long time, but basically it's just any hot chocolate mixed with red wine, and it's delicious. And the darker your hot chocolate is, the better it is. Um... To balance out, oh, she's she knows she always now you can watch how she reacts when she sees me talking and realizes that I'm not talking to her. She gets mad. Um, <laughs> um, just to balance out the flavor of the red wine, I guess I guess you could do well. I did like a base of hemp milk, which has a little bit of natural sweetness, a merlot because it's fruity and goes really well with chocolate. She's so insulted that I don't talk to her on Tuesday nights. Um, and then I use, I actually use a salted caramel hot chocolate because it was what I had, but it's not really salty. It's just kind of sweet. Um, and it was delicious. But I've made it before best on the stovetop when you make like a from scratch hot chocolate with real chocolate. Really delicious. So I made that over the weekend. That was good. If you're looking for a cozy drink to try while you're reading or getting comfy, whatever it is. Hey, hey, sleepyhead. Okay, um, <laughs> what did I read this week? I didn't. I didn't because, like I said last week, I'm in a little bit of a slump because I am just trying to use my mental energy to do soothing things like puzzles and Legos. Um, I know I said I was going to show off my uh, Legos and puzzles and I never did, but I took pictures. Um, I didn't take pictures of the Legos that I just did this weekend. Um, I did three ornaments, a snowman, a reindeer and then a reindeer in a in a ornament bubble which is actually on my tree and the other two are in my kitchen right now um let's see where's the puzzle this is the puzzle that I did um I started the I did the border on Thanksgiving and then I kind of slowly worked through the rest it's a thousand pieces no 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 hang on please don't you're gonna sit on all of the things She's huffing and puffing. <laughs> Why is she so mad? She did not help me do the puzzle. She was trying to steal the pieces from the table. <laughs> Go. Bye. Um, was a thousand pieces. We do have it at the library if you decide you want to do it yourself. Um, but there, it's like a little, a little Christmas festival. I hate the phone when I can't get the rotation to turn off. Um, just like a little Christmas festival. The sky was really hard to do. I will say the sky was really hard to do. Um, it is, it is, uh, a library puzzle. It was a, I think it was a donation. We just haven't put a barcode on it, but if you want to borrow it, give me a call. My extension is 207 and I can get a barcode on it for you. Um, and then this was the one, same deal. It doesn't have a barcode on it yet because it was a donation, but it has all the pieces. It is librarian approved and it was really cute. Uh, it was only 500 pieces, so I crushed it in like a day. Um, let me turn the rotation off. There we go. There we go. There we go. That was really easy to do that one. Um, I love puzzles. And then where's my Lego wreath? 
there's light Lego wreath that I made that I adore. I love looking at it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. I still have a pile of books on my bedside table, uh, which I think I'm actually really in the mood to read tonight. Um, I did a teen reads video today that will go live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram on Thursday at 4.30. And I just kind of like reviewed some old favorites of mine that I don't think that I've spoken about uh, yet to the teens in mass. Uh, and it just kind of reminded me of why I like favorite stories, right? There are stories and books that we love that are our favorites for a reason. Uh, and the one, you know, The One Spill Zone by Scott Westerfeld is a graphic novel, and I just love the style of it. I love that it's both creepy and post-apocalyptic, and um, I don't know if I want to call it relevant, but there's just an air of scariness to it that you're like, oh my god, that might not be too uh, far off from our lives, but I just love the, the art style of it. Um, that was one of the ones that I reviewed. I'm just kind of like looking at my bookshelf as I always do every week. I'm going, look at all the things that I love. Especially right in front of me, I have my Harry Potter shelf and a shelf of all Christopher Moore books and right next to it is the Night Circus. What else? What else? So some ones that I haven't read. I haven't read those. Yeah, I haven't read everything on my shelf. I just kind of have a lot. I'm that, that person that you see in internet jokes where it's like, you know, you buy a book and you say you're going to read it next and the books that are on your shelf say you're a liar. <laughs> um, because it's true, I'm a liar. I just collect them. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see. I think I'm actually going to try to read tonight. There's really nothing great on TV. That's the other thing is that I've been spending a lot of time watching awful cheesy holiday movies on Lifetime at Hallmark, and I've been playing Bad Christmas Bingo with my friends virtually. It's a really fun thing for us to do since we can't get together right now. Uh, I've been sending them bingo boards, and we've been playing Bad Christmas Bingo. <laughs> And it's a lot of fun, so I've been doing a lot of that too over the last week. So, but it was a good, it was a good brain break. You know, uh, you need a good brain break sometimes. And for some people, that's reading. For some people, that's puzzles. For some people, it's both. Whatever it is. Uh, but of course, as always, if there's something that you are reading that you want to talk about, please leave a comment on this video and let me know. Uh, you know, some of my favorite days in the library are when I I catch somebody on the phone and they just want to talk to me about what they're reading or what they just read, and I just love that. That's just one of my favorite things. Um, or like if I catch you guys in the parking lot, you know, if I'm on my way out and you're coming to pick up a curbside book, I just love being able to be like, hey, it's nice. We miss everybody, but we're just trying to keep everything safe, so just trying to be safe for everyone's sake, so, but we can see each other here, which is nice. So don't forget to share with me what you're reading. It really makes my day. <laughs> you have no idea. Um, I only have a couple of new releases. There were there were some. Uh, we definitely have a nice stack on our uh, pile of books that are ready to go out that were released today. Um, oh no, she's so mad. But she just had a snack, so she's good. Yeah? I want to get another snack after this. She doesn't know, but I got her a cat advent calendar, and it's December 1st, so it starts today. <laughs> She's going to be so excited. Um, but I have, I have only a couple, and they're not all on Libby yet. Um, but I do know, because we get uh, updates every week about the holds situation on Libby, I know everybody's always like, oh, there are so many holds on it, I'm on the wait list. But... Uh, where is it? There it is. I know a lot of holds are on uh, the 2020 Booker Prize by Douglas Stewart, Shuggy Bane. It's on Hoopla. You don't have to wait for it. It's on Hoopla. Everybody seems to be waiting for this one right now. I just put in an order for us to get the hard copy. I know that we put extra copies into Libby as of this week as well. It's on Hoopla. You don't have to wait for it. It is available as an ebook on Hoopla. There you go. Uh, I thought that was really exciting. I know that everybody is is waiting for that. Um, 
Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm so distracted by her, I'm sorry. A heartbreaking story of addiction, sexuality, and love, Shuggy Bane is an epic portrayal of a working class family that is rarely seen in fiction. An unforgettable story of a young Hugh Shuggy Bane, a sweet and lonely boy who spends his 1980s childhood in rundown public housing in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, so, uh, again, it won the 2020 Booker Prize. We're getting to the point in 2020 where we're seeing more awards handed out. We're also seeing all of these best of lists, which I know I have to start posting on our page. I said I would, but I'm trying to compile them all first and kind of schedule them methodically through. Um, and I know the, the Goodreads ones uh, are so popular. Uh, let's take a look at the Goodreads ones while we're talking about uh, 2020 lists. Oh, she's sitting in her bread box. I call it a bread box. It's just a basket, but she looks like a loaf of bread. She looks like a big loaf of bread because she's so big. So I call it her bread box. She's just so cute. I don't know, is anybody else more and more obsessed with their pets now that we're all home? I mean, it's nice. And I think our pets are more obsessed with us as well. Right? Um, oh, where did it go? It used to be a banner on the top. Where is it? Community? Choice Awards. There we go. Usually there's like a big banner on the top. Uh, we're tallying your votes and we'll reveal the winners. Okay, so that's why they're not showing what the... On the 8th. Oh. Nominees on your shelves. Ooh, Check Please Book 2 is Best Graphic Novels and Comics. And Beach Read that I read was nominated for Best Romance. Ooh. Um, so hopefully that comes out. We can talk about it next week <laughs> when it goes out. Um... All right, let's see. Uh, I feel like there was something else I wanted to share on Hoopla, but I don't remember. There's always just so many interesting things on here. Oh, there's a Merry Rom-Coms banner at the top of the ebooks page. Um, cooking for Hanukkah. Which is really nice because we just finished like the cooking for Thanksgiving section, so now we have Hanukkah. Um, what is that on here? There's so much to look through in Hoopla. It's like you really have to sift through. No, but we'll get so we'll get to this. So there is a whole group of Thomas Perry books that they have on feature right now, and that's because Thomas Perry's Eddie's Boy, uh, which is a butcher's boy novel. I don't know what number it is in the series uh just came out today it is a suspense thriller let's see if i can figure out what number it is how many of them are there not that many okay uh but that's but so if you want to read the rest of them or other books by thomas perry um there are more on here so Eddie's Boy isn't on Hoopla, but like I said sometimes when you're waiting for it you want to read other things you want to catch up go back they're here on Hoopla for you. What else is on here? <gasps> DIY holiday gifts, decorating, and more. Ooh, that's a good look. Look at, oh, look at that. And in a year where sometimes shipping is not so reliable, or maybe we're trying to save money or be more sustainable, which should not just be 2020, it should be always. Um, making gifts is really special. Oh, cooking, baking, and making. Whoa. Christmas stocking ornaments, that's cute. Crafts for Hanukkah. Oh, it's just lots of holidays. I see some St. Patrick's Day on there. I see Halloween. Pretty packages. My wrapping jobs are always awful. Maybe not the worst in our family, but like there's definitely like a hierarchy of wrapping jobs in my family's house. And I am not at the top. I don't think I'm at the bottom, but I'm not at the top. Oh, the gingerbread book. Look at that. I wish I could do that. That's amazing. 
54 cookie construction projects for party centerpieces. I mean, yeah, I get it. You don't want, it's a lot of sugar, but like I would end up eating it, right? Um, I would end up being that person slowly picking off the candy canes and gumdrops from, from the uh, gingerbread house. That would be a sad centerpiece at that point. Um, but any new featured comics? Oh, yeah, this one, I think I said this last week, this one's new Batman Three Jokers. Oh, if you've never seen this before, I love this series. The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. The illustrations are so sweet and beautiful, and the story is really adorable. And there are, there are two, um, and there's supposed to be a third one, but it was delayed. Partially production, partially they just wanted to make it perfect. So I think it comes out, I want to say early next year or spring? I'm not sure. Um, okay, so that's Hoopla, but let's go through... Libby, um, also on Libby, one of our new featured collections, Tis the Season for Reading, there it is, right there, uh, which is just a whole mix of fiction, nonfiction, cooking, baking, crafting, stories for all of the holiday season. Um, and then of course, all things food and baking, there it is, my favorite cookbook! The America's Test Kitchen TV Show Cookbook, which if you watch Book Cooks, I've probably used five times now, is my favorite cookbook. We have the newest version at the library. This is the 2019 version, uh, and we just got the 2021 season at the library. It is a big, hefty book. It's really good. It's my favorite cookbook. Um, books as promoted by NPR. Um popular literary fiction, social justice and activism, award winners, great narrators. And I think pretty much the same new young adult books. Kids and teens. Yeah, okay. Um let's see what I have on my shelf that I saved for everybody today. All right, so from Jane Smiley, this is Perestroika in Paris, a novel. This one, uh, I don't like how many holds on it, but there's only one copy right now, but it actually seemed to have quite a bit of buzz uh, on the review circuit and from our, um, our distributor. Uh, from the Pulitzer Prize winning author of A Thousand Acres and The Last Hundred Years Trilogy, a captivating, brilliantly imaginative story of three extraordinary animals and a young boy whose lives intersect in Paris. Uh, Paris, short for a perestroika, is a spirited racehorse at a racetrack west of Paris. One afternoon at dusk, she finds the door of her stall open and... She's a curious filly, wanders all the way to the City of Light. She's dazzled and often mystified by the sights, sounds, and smells around her. But she isn't afraid. Soon she meets an elegant dog, a German shorthair pointer named Frida, who knows how to get by without attracting the attention of suspicious Parisians. Paris and Frida coexist for a time in the city's lush green spaces, nourished by Frida's strategic trips to the vegetable market. They keep company with two irrepressible ducks and an opinionated raven. But then Paris meets a human boy, Etienne, and discovers a new otherworldly part of Paris, the ivy-walled house where the boy and his nearly 100-year-old great-grandmother live in seclusion. As the cold weather and Christmas near, the unlikeliest of friendships bloom. But how long can a runaway horse stay undiscovered in Paris? How long can a boy keep her hidden and all to himself? Jane Smiley's beguiling new novel is itself an adventure that celebrates curiosity, ingenuity, and the desire of all creatures for true love and freedom. Uh, so I think this is also tagged as mythology, uh, fiction, literature, mythology, and it's just, it's gotten some really good reviews and it's gotten some good buzz. So that is available. The wait's not that long for it on Libby. Uh, there is only one copy, so it looks like it's longer than it is, but if people read through it, it should not be that long. Um, what else is new on here? Uh, so I already talked about Eddie's Boy, and then there's um, uh, 
the latest book in the Killer Instinct series by Lars Kepler is called Lazarus, and that was released today as well. Um, what was the previous one? It's not on Libby quite yet. Sometimes in, in our distributor's website, you can like click on a series name and it'll tell you what it all is, but today's not working. Um, what was it? The Rabbit Hunter was the last one. The latest installment in the internationally best-selling Juna Lina series sees the Swedish detective on the trail of the worst serial killer he's seen yet. Across the continent, someone is brutally murdering Europe's worst criminals. Who can object to taking out rapists, arsonists, human traffickers? But when two of the victims have a direct connection to the detective, it's clear to him that somebody's trying to send him a message. His longtime colleague, Saga Bauer, dismisses his hunch as paranoid ravings. But all evidence points to a killer who they previously thought could only haunt their dreams. As innocent bodies begin to pile up in Sweden, the race is on track down the most is on to track down the most terrifying villain they have ever encountered. And this one had quite a bit of demand as well. And it had some starred reviews, which is nice. Um, as always, I like to make sure that when we're ordering books, it's something that is in demand, something that people are asking for, and things that have positive reviews. Or not necessarily positive, but like worthwhile reviews. Um, there are tons of books out there that maybe reviewers are like, okay, I didn't agree with this or I didn't personally like it, but they know that it's a good book or a good piece of literature or a good piece of nonfiction. She's just so cute in that bread box. She's so cute. I'm so distracted by her all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there were, there were some more, but there's not that much on Libby yet. And there are, um, some things that we do have. Oh, there are a lot of like big uh kids books this week uh for teens karen m mcmanus who wrote uh one of us is lying has a new book called the cousins and i know that that one is going to be hot 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 like all of her other books are um so that's for young adults and then also i mean like the top of the heap um when i look at our distributor is dev pilkey's new cat kid comic club um, which I know Miss Marie has a zillion copies of. So that's the author of Dog Man, but now there's the Cat Kid Comic Club. And I know we have tons of copies for all of our readers who are definitely going to be interested in it. Uh, I'm trying to take a peek and see what comes out next week. A couple of things. Again, now it's like the end of the year. Oh, Colleen Hoover has a new one. Um... Rachel Maddow has one. It's the end of the year, so then publishing kind of slows down, and then once January hits, we're going to ramp back up again, and it's just the way it works. In a year where publishing and dates have been kind of strange, where things have been pushed back and forward and back again, you know, we're just happy to get any any books at all, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so these books and many more are available right now. As always, if there's something that you're looking for and we don't have it at our library, you know we can order it from another library for you. All of it's available for curbside pickup. And uh, we're just trying to do everything we can to get books into your hands right now. Uh, I think that's really, that's, that's it for me for tonight. I'm going to go give Licorice her advent calendar snack. She, she didn't hear the word snack. Also, she's falling asleep. Um, <laughs> and I think I'm going to go make myself that uh, ginger hot chocolate that I saw the recipe for that I'm pretty excited for. Um, and then, I mean, there are a lot of exciting things coming up at the library. I'm taking a look at my calendar right now as well. Um, because um, hopefully everybody saw the constant contact, the email, our, it's like jargon, um, saw our newsletter, our email newsletter go out today. Um, we, we have, you know, our adult craft for the month coming up. We still have, um, we have a wait list for it right now, but I'm pretty sure that I will be able to get kits to everybody in the wait list. I'm pretty sure. Um, 
and we have our holiday windows coming up if you saw our Halloween windows we have our winter holiday ones uh, that Miss Marie and I are working on I have some of the supplies for it on my coffee table right now um, lots of glue sticks and paper and cute things and we're working on those windows really hard and I think they will be ready next week and you can come see it it's just a little bit of fun and holiday light and winter light just to spread some joy and it will be available for a couple of weeks so that there's plenty of chances for everyone to see it regardless of um, current safety and distancing guidelines so you know like not regardless of but so that everyone can kind of spread out and it's not going to be everybody at once because it's going to be available for a while so keep it nice and safe and distant for everybody uh, and there's a little story that goes with the windows so really excited for everyone to see it um, and of course tomorrow I have book cooks I have something really yummy to make which I think um, I think I, I kind of just chose it today normally I put the recipes up on the website ahead of time but I really wasn't sure what I was gonna want to eat this week because at the end of the day I'm still I still have to eat all the things that I share with you um, and I found a recipe that just kind of seems cozy and filling and hearty to me. Of course, it's from my favorite cookbook that I go back to all the time. Well, not... All right, I have a couple of favorite cookbooks. If you've been watching book cooks, um, one of them is the America's Test Kitchen book, and the other is the Nom Nom Paleo cookbooks. Favorites. Um, and then I brought home a cookbook for next week, which is also a repeat. It's the Whole Smith's cookbook, which I love. Um, so I'm like just looking at cozy recipes now when I see a cookbook come in or that's on our shelves. I'm like, oh, that's a soup. Oh, that's a cozy roasted dish. Oh, and that's where I'm getting my recipe ideas from. So don't forget to check those. Those recipes are always on our website. And then the cookbooks are, of course, available for checkout. And if you are looking for cookbooks for upcoming holidays or if this time of year you like to bake or you like to look for slow cooker or instant pot recipes and you don't know what to look for, just give me a call. Uh, let me know. We have so many cookbooks I can recommend to you. I love our cookbook section. Love it. Um, it's one of my favorite things to browse. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think that's it. So I have one more puzzle to work on, and then I'm going to bring our puzzles back and put barcodes on them. So again, if you're looking for a puzzle to do, uh, now that it is dark and cold and we're going to try to stay cozy inside a little bit more, if you want to do some puzzles, let me know. I can describe them to you over the phone, and you can come pick them up for curbside pickup. All right, everyone. That is definitely it for tonight. Lickers and I are going to go have our advent calendar treats. I have one for myself, too. <laughs> and we're going to go get cozy for the rest of the night. And I hope you all are cozy, warm, happy, healthy, and safe. And I hope that you all have a great book or movie or audio book to keep you company. And I will see you next time. All right, everyone. Good night.